I want to show you something here. Ezra, Ezra, the book of Ezra. 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 Ezra, chapter 5, Ezra, from verse 1 to 5. Now, when the prophets, Haggai, the prophet, and Zachariah, the sign of grandson of Edo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, whose spirit was over them. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shetir, heir to the throne of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Josadok, arose and began to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God, Agai and Zechariah, were with them, supporting, encouraging them. At that time, Tatenai, the governor of the province of the west side of the Euphrates River, Sheta, Bozenai, and, the, and their colleagues came to them and said, who issued a mm. decree Amen. and authorized you to rebuild this temple and to re restore this wall, shrine? Then according, we told them, accordingly we told them the names of the men who were reconstructing the building. But the eye of their God was on the elders of the Jews. So they, Totenai, and the others did not stop them until a report could come before Darius. Then an answer was returned by a letter concerning it. Let's pray. Thank Amen. you, Lord, for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In fact, I want to speak briefly about your opposition. Because when I was praying this morning, I found that it is opposers that determine your level in life. Opposers are there to build the stumbling blocks so that you won't do what you wish. It was opposers but the time of Israel when they wanted to rebuild the temple of God and they delayed it until the time of Darius. We know that Nebuchadnezzar, what he did, he took everything from the house of God and take everyone's slave and made them slavery. Took them to, to, to the land of confusion in Babylon. But the Bible says by the time of Jeremiah, they were prophesying. Many times they were try to believe that they will be taken home. Even by the time of Daniel, Daniel once even prayed concerning what Jeremiah prophesied. Daniel that these people will be taken there. Others will prophesy that they will come there. And Daniel was hearing a message that is better they build. Daniel the land of their slave. They are going to die there. But now, by the time when God remembers them, already the enemies were building up. Knowing that the city of Jerusalem will never be built again. But when we are reading here, we are beginning to find that there were two prophets, Zechariah and Prophet Haggai. They began to prophesy that 
Now it's time to build. We know that when we read about Prophet Haggai, very powerful prophet, who was saying, why do you stay in your panel houses? When, when the house of God is like this, Makaya also came also and prophesied the same thing. So the prophets were prophesying. But these ones will say it is time to lay the foundation. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell someone say, my friend, it's time to build. It is time that your opposers must surface. And they have to be defeated. And they have to be defeated. Because you don't know your opposers. It took all the years. There were kings that were born. And those kings were saying, Jerusalem will never be built. It's a city of rebellion. Where we have read now, we can hear the temple of God is called Shrine. shrine. And the opposers were rising up to say they want to build their shrine. It's better we stop them. Thank God because of Darius. Darius was already seeing the power of God in the life of Daniel. We remember that Daniel one time was thrown in lion's den. And it was Darius who went in the morning and said, I have seen you serving God. I'm sure the God that you serve has remembered you. Daniel said, Daniel said, My God that I said, send the lions to be silenced. He made the lions to be silenced. In fact, he sent the angels to come to close the mouth of, of the lions. And truly, his opposers fall inside the cage. All the lions inside that den destroyed them before they reached the so Darius knew about whoever opposes the one who said God will be destroyed. I don't know if you are hearing that. So let us read what we have read again. Read Ezra 5 again. From verse 1 to 5. Because today is the day that your opposers if you are saving God, they will be destroyed. I'm here to declare that your opposers must be destroyed. They will look at you when you are succeeding and and they will there. never stop you. Where you are working, they will never stop you. What you are doing, they will they never will stop you. you. They will talk against you. But they will see you overtaking. They will see you reaching there. Listen, it was the prophets. Just read there. Uh -huh. Now, when the prophets, Haggai and prophet Zechariah, the son or grandson of Edo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of of God of Israel. Stop there, Mama. Put my names there. I'm looking my mina in the names of prophets. Okay. Now, when the prophets, Jerry and prophet Eunice, the son of Makananis, prophesied to Charis, which is in Glen Austin, not in Midrand. Not Tembisa. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I Tembisa, ask Tembisa. Glen Austin. 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 Glen
uh-huh. in the name <laughs> in the name of the God of Israel whose spirit was over them yes then Zerubbabel the son of Shelatiel uh-uh. heir of the throne of uh-uh. Judah not Zerubbabel yeah. uh-uh. <laughs> Okay. Then, I'm a The one that are ruling. Oh, okay. Huh? <laughs> no, the way I'm. Then, Ramapos. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Then, Matamera, uh-huh. the son of Ramapos. Yes. Eh, of the throne of South Africa. And Yeshua. Not Yeshua, whom will I call? The vice president. I cannot say the vice president. Mashatile. Man? Mashatile. And Mashatile, uh-huh. the son of, I don't know, arose and began to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God, Haggai, or Jerry, and Eunice, uh-huh. were with them. <laughs> Supporting and encouraging them. So now today, now Lehon, it's no longer them, it's you. As it's no longer leaders. As it's you, you are in the government of yourself. Say I'm in the government of yourself. Look here. Can you just read go, going down, Mama, now? Because, you know, when I was reading this, I said, by God. At that time, yeah. Tatenai, the governor of the province mm-hmm. of the west side of the Euphrates River, and Sheta Bezenai, and their colleagues came to them and said, who issued you a decree and authorized you to rebuild the temple and to restore the wall, meaning the shrine. Then according, accordingly, we told them the names of the men who were restructuring this building. Stop there. It is only when they start building that the people came and said, who has decreed you to do it? Who has allowed you or given you authority to do it? You will never be opposed until you start to do something. If you carry on, try to just dodge or waste time. You will never know that you have opposers. I'm here to tell you that already because you are doing something, there are opposers that are ready to see you falling down. There are two things that opposers do. They are there to restrain you. They are there to destroy you. They are there to restrain you. They are there to cancel the mission. Just to destroy you. In this service today, I'm here to tell you that God from above, God of heaven, has given you authority to move forward with what you do. And no one will be able to stop you. When I read Ezra 4, from verse 1 to 5, I found that when they started to build, the Bible says the Samaritans, they came to join them. Wrong people came to join. So that they frustrate what has been done. We are living in a time where when you start something, the wrong people will come to join. But the Bible says, the leaders say, 
We have got nothing in common. We cannot accept you to join. Because we know we are doing this because of God. We don't need wrong people to join us. To be part of us. Because we understand what we are doing. From today, in the business you are doing, God will remove the wrong people because he does not want you to be joined with the wrong people. He wants you to work with him. I've seen people who were joined by wrong people and they neutralized them and they fall. It is time now you as a child of God that you allow those who go to go as long as you are with God there will be no opposition that will stand against you because God is your majority as God is your majority I am here to prophesy that from today don't stop what you are doing it is time to move forward with what you are doing even if it's small it will flourish even if it looks like it's falling the Lord God will be your ability if you hear me shout hallelujah I'm here against your post because God is on your side I said God is on your side God is on your side I don't know what they are putting in front of you so that you delay to finish what you have started. I don't know what they are doing in, in, in your life trying to oppose you, trying to stop you, trying to destroy you. But I'm here today as a prophet. I'm here as a prophet that today your opposers will see you flourishing. I said they will see you flourishing. I don't care what they are doing and what they are planning because God has opened a door for you and no one can stop it. The Bible said they will come to you one way but they will run away seven ways because God is on your side. If you are hearing me shout hallelujah tell everybody hey, hey, hey. Don't stop doing what you are doing because of your opposers. They can't do what you are doing. They are just ready to stop you. But you do it because you are assigned to do what you are about to do. You are born to do what you are doing and you have to do it. And when you are getting on doing it, God will give you authority and power if you are here to shout hallelujah. In fact, I'm professor. I'm not preaching now. I say, you, you, you. If you are hearing me, I see your opposers falling. This is the week that your opposers will worship your God. I said they are about to worship your God. 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 I'm hearing a voice say, hey, I will open a door for you that your opposers cannot enter. When you enter, they will be left to be high. I said they will be left to be high. I can see the hand of the Lord that is upon your life. The business you are trying to do, you will see it flourishing. I said the business you are trying to do, I said you will see it flourishing. Even if you are hearing me shout hallelujah. You know, I was told this morning I was told this thing this morning. I said, what is happening? God said, you see it, my children. No one can stop them. Yeah. 
but the opposers are trying to affect their focus. They are busy talking the language of the opposers Tell to talk with me who overcome the opposers. There's something that I've read in the book of Joshua 1. Let's read that. Joshua 1. Joshua chapter 1. But I, I don't want to read verse 8 and 9. Five. But I just want to show you another verse there. When I read that verse, I was like, oh my God. Can you just read verse 16 to verse 18? They answered Joshua, saying, uh, uh -huh. All that you have commanded us, we will do. Mm -hmm. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Verse 18. 18 says, Any man who rebels against your command and does not obey everything that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Listen here. When God wants to lift you in front of your opposers, they will confirm the word that God has spoken to you. You see here, the Israelites here, they came together and began to quote what God has spoken to but Joshua. Be strong and be courageous. It was no longer God speaking. It was the Israelites who were speaking. They said, we know you are chosen. Look here, look here. The opposition was nullified by the time of Joshua. To the extent that they spoke what God told Joshua. What is it that God told Joshua? God says, be courageous, be strong. But now they came and say, Joshua, we can we. see you are like afraid. We can see like you are afraid. But we know you are the man. Whoever stands against your word will be killed. Will kill that person. I don't know if you're hearing that. When God began to raise you, they have to speak what God told you. Uh, listen to this. Don't care about whoever speaks, whatever is speaking. Remember what God told you. Stand on it. You are about to hear your opposers speaking the language that God told you. The word that God told you. The Bible says, they said, any opposers will be put to death. I can see your opposers because God is raising you. Because God is raising you. Your opposers will quote what God has told you. I want to tell you something. This thing happened to me. There was one man of God I was working with. He told me something that I've never forget. He surrendered his church to me. After he surrendered his church to me, people start to come to church. He told me that you are the leader of this church. He, he is an evangelist. When you see people coming to church, his wife encourages him. Hey, go and take over. Go and take your church. Go and take the money that was given. So when they came to my church, I was staying in my 
they say they want their money. My wife was there. They want their church pay. And I says, oh, me, I can sit but, down. Oh, wow. I can sit down. Take everything. Carry on with what you're doing. They didn't know that the Lord God was with me. I don't know if you're hearing me. After they have taken money, the man told me that he was beaten by stroke. He was a prayerful man. So he went to the bush to pray. And he came with his wife to my house again and said, you know what? I know that God has given you Winnie Mandela. Winnie Mandela. Tebisa is yours. By then, my members were not there. I was in someone's church. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. I didn't have a church by then. I was in someone's church. And I was just saying yes. And the leader was saying, can you see the whole tembisa? It's in your hand. So now there's no pastor will be above you in tembisa. I says, Amen. You are talking my language. You are talking what God told me. They are about to come to you and talk what God told you. I said they are about to come to you. The Lord God will force them. When he told me that, I said I understand. He said I'm begging you that you leave my church. You can go anywhere and plant a church or come and take over as God has not spoken with me. I was not in a hurry. I'm here to tell you don't worry about time. The Lord is confirming in your opposers whoever opposes you will be put to death. I don't know if you are hearing me. Shake somebody and say, hey, I'm hearing your opposers speaking your language. The Bible says when Gideon was about to fight some people, God said to him, hey, don't take the whole army. Don't take the whole army. Take the whole army to the water. Check how they drink. Whoever drinks like a dog put it behind. And from there, he found himself with few soldiers. Few soldiers. And God says, hey, I don't win by majority. I start small. There are some people here. What you are doing is small. It is being opposed. But you will overcome. The Bible says when they are the tent of the enemy. Joshua began to hear Joshua them talking about themselves. He says he dreamed a bread hitting the tent. A bread hit the tent. Another one says, hey, it's Joshua. It's Joshua. I see someone here. Your opposite are talking about you. When people talk about you, don't worry, don't worry, don't shake, don't shake, it is your time. Say it is my time. Don't shake, 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 don't now I'm going to the scriptures. Now. I'm going to the scriptures. Now. Look here in Luke 12. Verse 49. Luke 12. Verse 49. Verse 49. Yes. It says. I have come to cast fire 
meaning judgment on the earth. And how I wish that it were already kindled. Carry on reading. I have to 53. Okay. I have a baptism of great suffering with which to be baptized. And how great I am distressed until it is accomplished. Do you support that I came to, gra to grant peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division between believers and unbelievers. For from now on, five in one household will be divided over me. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Listen to this. Chilecha. I'm no longer a professor, I'm teaching you. I accept professor, I don't get a root. Here Jesus, more Jesus, was saying he have baptism. In other words, baptism was talking about his death and resurrection. That when I've come, there's going to be a fight. But this fight, don't expect it from far. It's in the house. The fault is not outside of the house. It's inside the house. And now, this baptism, I want it to happen first for the sake of this fire that I have brought. Many of us today, we don't understand that the best opposition that brings promotion is the opposite is the uh, is the is the the one that is inside the one that is inside opposition that is inside is the one that brings up promotion promotion you never find it until you are hurt by the one you love most. When we read here, we can see that the Bible says, I tell you, I have rather, I have brought division division between believers and unbelievers. In other words, that opposition Opposition also describe how far you are with God. When you start to get opposition in how the house, he's there to declare you, are you a Christian eh, or a believer? When you are holding on, opposition will come inside. Some of you, you are mm. born in the family where people are fighting. You just come and carry on with it. It is time now that you allow the fire to burn more. Don't be troubled by any opposition. Because we know very well that he who fights is the consuming fire. Soon you they will see your promotion. I have read in Romans 8. Can we read verse 31? Verse Romans 8, verse 31 to 32. Uh -huh. It says, What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, 
How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? When the writer of Romans was saying this, he was saying that don't worry when you don't have what you want. If God gave you Jesus, he can give you everything. If they're standing against you, don't worry about that. If you are lacking, Something, don't worry about it. You have been given Jesus. It means God can give you everything. Look at that verse again. It says what? It says what? If he did not spare, even his own son. And he, but he gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all I think when we look at this verse that we can say that everything is working against us. There is opposition working against us. There are enemies working against us. But we must not worry when we are not getting it. You are waiting for something you are not getting it. If you are given Jesus there is nothing that is above Jesus. Jesus is the word that Jesus creates everything. If you have been given How someone to, to die for you, he can also give you everything. everything. Opposers are happy when you are grumbling. When you are worried, if God gave you Jesus, He can give you everything. If you hear me say, let me show you another verse. Because I want us to read verses now. Let's read this verse. In 2 Timothy 2. Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2, verse 23. I'm here to nullify your opposers. From today, you don't have an opposer. Where you are applying that tender, you don't have an opposer. Where you are trying to get a job, you don't have an opposer. If you have been given Jesus, he can give you everything. Can you just read that verse? It says 23. Yes. But have nothing to do with foolish and ignorant speculations, useless disputes over an edifying stupid con controversions. Yes. Since you know that they produce strife and give birth to quarrels. Mm. Carry on reading. 36. Okay. 36. The servants of the Lord's, Lord must not participate in quarrels, mm. but must be kind to everyone, even tempered, preserving peace, and peace kind to everyone, even tempered, preserving peace, and he must be skilled in teaching, patient and tolerant when wronged. He must correct those who are in opposition with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and be led to the knowledge of the truth. Accurately understanding and welcoming it and that they may come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. The opposers, they are under his hands, Satan. You cannot argue with them. You know who fight for you. Your opposers are there. 
just to confuse the plan of God. But when we are reading here, we can see what your opposers are doing. You can quarrel with them. They want you to talk. They want you to think. They want you to respond. I don't know if you're hearing that. Amen. Your opposers want to hear from but you. The says, no, but the Bible says, no, you are a servant of God. You are serving God. You need to speak with them with wisdom. With wisdom. Maybe God is then. Maybe God can save them and give them mercy and save them. Because you know they are lost. Listen to this. These people are opposing you. They don't know you. They don't know how your God works. They don't know that your God is mightier. They don't know that your God is mightier. Now they are fighting you. You need to become the man of God. Amen. Amen. Now they are fighting you. You need to become the man of God. 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 You need to become I don't want to answer my opposers. I normally keep quiet. They, they get frustrated. When you get silence, they get frustrated. But if you talk, they know where you're going. Don't give them direction. They will nullify your destiny. It is time that you keep quiet. Allow your opposers to talk what they can talk. Rectify them in love. Is then God will grant them salvation. The same salvation you have can reach them. If you hear me say it. You know when I read this one. First Peter three fourteen. Petro Matom. It says what? First Peter three fourteen. Petro Matom chapter three, revealing verse fourteen. It says, but even if you should suffer for the sake. Though it is not certain that you will, you are still blessed. When your opposers are oppressing you, even if you suffer for righteousness, though you don't have anything to touch, anything that they have, you are still blessed. Can you see now, to be blessed doesn't mean to have materials gains. It's when you suffer for righteousness. Whatever they are doing on you, you know what will happen to them. You can see the end and the judgment. And you understand the one who fights for you. You need to allow them to do what they are doing. You know, to talk what they are talking. Can you just carry on reading, Mama? It says what? Do not be afraid of their intimidating threats. No, be troubled or disturbed by their opposition. Do not be afraid of their threats. I, I want to tell you something. Threats are there for you to change your focus. Tell yourself that don't be afraid. Hold on to what you're holding. Don't be afraid of their threats. Because listen, soon they will know that they are defeated. Can, can you tell them, say, my friend, who's threatening you? you? Who's threatening you? The Bible says, do not be afraid of their threats. They are threats. Whatever they are doing, they want to confuse you so that you change or you react. Christians cannot react because they understand what is coming. I don't know if you hear that. So we can see here that God 
Yes. Yes. If they do all the threats, according to God, they are already defeated. Look at this verse, Romans 12. Verse 19 to 21. Verse 19 to 21. It says what? Romans 12, verse 19 to 21. Maroma 12. 19 to 21. Yes. It says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath and his judicial righteousness. For it is written in scripture, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, Feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. You know, hey. this scripture is showing us that <sighs> when we feed your enemy, <sighs> you are shaming them. What is this? God wants us to shame our enemies. They were talking about you give them bread. That bread is a shame to them. Why? Because you know God Why? is the one who we'll fight for you. Can you see people are talking against you? Talking Baba, about you you came to them, them and give them money. You shame them. But when you withdraw, it means you are offended. Don't allow God to leave his position. When you are doing that, you are giving God's position to deal with them nicely. I want to tell you that this year, your enemies will be silenced by God. Your opposers will fall for your sake. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can teach you to do this. I can say for in color, but I've practiced this. Maranan tweki di reile. I found it works. Katolori yashuma. It really works. Yashuma. I don't know if you hear me. It really works. This yashuma tavaye. It is time to love your opposers because the vengeance belongs to God. I say vengeance belongs to God. Stop fighting for yourself. I have practiced that. I have practiced this thing. It works. It really works. I prophesy someone here. Today, let your enemies be exposed. Let your opposers fall down. I want to take your position. Whoever wants to take your position, you will leave your enemies alone. Whoever wants to take your position, 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 whoever wants to take the blessing that I'm hearing is coming to someone who's here. There's something that is about to happen. The apostles have been opposing you. But I see victory. I see celebration. I see celebration in your life. The Lord is about to fight for you. Can you tell me about the Lord is about to fight for you? The Lord is about to fight the Lord is about to fight hey, for you. Your opposers, they are about to face something they are not going to face. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. If I read this verse, I will close. Because your opposers are coming to me now. When I'm preaching here. They are coming to me now. <laughs> I'm here preaching your opposers are coming to me. Say, why? why are you saying this? So I'm silencing them when I'm preaching. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. 
you need to understand why you are opposed. It's because God has opened a big door for you. Opposition is there because there's an effective door that has been opened for you. I want you to enter. I say, I want you to enter. A door of opportunities has been opened for you. That's why things are not working your way. That's why things are so difficult. There's an effective door. There's an opportunity that has been set for you. Listen, there's an opportunity of businesses, of ministries, of success, of prosperity that has been set for you. Read that verse, read that verse. Because a wide door for effective service uh -huh. has opened to me yes. in Ephesus a very pro promising opportunity. Yes. And there are many adversaries. Today you are seeing all these adversaries. Because the door that was open is big. I prophesy you to enter that door. A door of victory you are entering. A door of business you are entering. When I'm looking at you, you are worrying about your adversaries. You are worrying about opposition. But you will not see beyond them. There's a door that can make you a millionaire. There's a door that can make you famous. There's a door that can make you the head. I see you as the head. The head in the village. The head in the city. I see you as the head. I see your opposers celebrating with you. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah.